It gives me great pleasure to present my longtime friend and comrade, James M. Pendergast. He joined the 129th Field Artillery in 1917, went to the 3rd Officer's Training Camp at Fort Sill, and won a commission as a first lieutenant, was assigned to the 130th Field Artillery, and commanded a battery in that regiment. Through all the actions of San Mihiel, the Muse Argonne offensives, brought the battery back home and discharged it. The men loved him and gave him a gold watch to show that they did. The battery was from Topeka, Kansas. He studied law and became a practicing attorney in Kansas City, Missouri. He's a Christian gentleman. His professional career is an honorable one. He's a man of integrity. He has a fine family and is a grandfather. He has five grandsons. I am proud to call him friend and comrade, Mr. Pendergast. Ladies and gentlemen, I consider this an unusual occasion to be introduced by a former president of the United States must be counted a high honor, second only to the opportunity to speak to the citizens of this community. This is an occasion entirely of my own choosing. A person is often required to speak when he prefers to remain silent. But silence is a luxury which all too often we cannot afford. Tonight, I want to break a silence that goes back 15 years on a subject that seems to become very popular about once every two years usually at election time. I know you have been reading quite a bit lately about something called Pentergastism, and I can tell you that I have been hearing a lot about it myself at the office and even in my own home. Just the other day, my young grandson, Joe, came to me wearing a very troubled expression. Granddad, he said, what is this Pentergastism? And the young fellow stumbled over the word. I think it is a good question. And it deserves an answer. It deserves an answer. If I am the kind of grandparent who is worried about the future of his children and grandchildren in our community, they were born here as I was. This town is their home. Here, God willing, they will follow their careers and try to live honorably with other people. I know it is selfish of me to fret about my own children and their children. I want my five grandsons to move easily among their friends without some dark stigma. If I speak of them momentarily, it is because I am an incurable parent and seek for them the equal opportunity which America holds out to every child. But more than this, the answer has to come, a fair and honest answer, not only for my grandsons, but for many, many thousands of persons, old Kansas Cityans, and new, who may wonder just what is Pendergastism and why is it periodically used in this manner. Much has been written about my uncle, Tom Pendergast, in Kansas City's early days, enough to fill a hundred volumes. Some very good things have been said about him and some very bad things. People with judgment, historians, political experts, the worker, the newsboy on the corner, the clerk, and the housewife, at one time or another, all have voiced their sincere judgment on the merits of the system under Tom Pendergast. The years have been filled with a thousand verdicts 
on his contribution to this community, on the good or evil that took root under his party. The record shows quite plainly that it all came to a tragic end for Tom Pendergast in 1939. It was a collapse brought on by forces so complex and so far-reaching as to defy a simple explanation and certainly to make a fool of anyone who attempts it. I am not the one to say on this occasion whether Tom Pendergast was part saint or part sinner, part benefactor or part boss, good Samaritan or mischief maker. I am not the one to say he was too merciful or too greedy, or whether he was all of these things, or part of them, or none of them. It is not for me to judge. That is the task of some greater power. But I have a personal opinion, which I seek to impose on no one. I know that I share it with many thousands of others. We have certain memories about him. We remember him for his kindness and charity, his many gifts of food, clothing, coal, and money to the needy poor. I feel with thousands of others that our town made substantial gains under Tom Pendergast. The county courthouse, city hall, the municipal court building, the municipal auditorium. All of these were built without a breath of scandal. And under Mr. Truman's careful supervision as eastern judge of the county court, the Jackson County road system was rated second only to the leading county in America, Westchester, New York. Tom Pendergast was shorn of power almost 20 years ago. He died 11 years ago. A generation has been born in the meanwhile. Great changes have occurred, sparked by new ideas and new concepts. But the obsolete tactics of some politicians remain unchanged. They are puzzling to voters in this as in past elections. I submit that the label of Pendergast has no meaning. It belongs to an era now gone, to a system buried nearly 20 years ago. Despite this, certain politicians keep hauling out the old moth-eaten banner to deceive and mislead. I am the only Pendergast active in politics. I hear our opponents shouting, stop Pendergastism. But they never say what it is they want to stop. Do they want to stop good government? For that is the only thing my people have ever stood for. Do they want to stop decency and honesty in public life? For that has been my advice to every candidate I have ever supported. I have told each of them, conduct yourself in office so that the voters will be happy to re-elect you. Do they want to stop efficiency in office? For that's what our organization has stood for through the years. Yes, I have recommended people for certain positions. A recognized practice in business and politics, but always with the provision that if they're not honest and capable, they should be rejected. In this primary, I have endorsed for office men like John W. Swartz, Hank Johnson, Melvin Hilliard, Carol Kennett, John Miller, James Gleason, Dr. C.G. Leach, Perrin McElroy, 
and Hugh G. Carr. They're fine citizens and capable men. No strings are attached to these endorsements except one, to serve the best interests of the people. The cry of Pentergastism by certain individuals in this town is aimless and deceptive. They say it in a way to make it appear there is some stain or stigma attached to it. But it is the simple tyranny of partisanship, the cry of a group of local conspirators who are trying to make the public believe in ghosts and witches and thus divert attention from their own record in office. We must not let partisan politics widen to a great and dangerous degree. We all know that so often a party worker does not mourn the loss of an evil party, but only the loss of his job. Political philosophy is one thing and political practice is another. I feel it is a low and hateful thing to try to win the election in 1956 on the basis of events of 20 years ago. A political organization should run on its own record and not on a label that has no motive except secrecy and treachery. And no honest political leader will conduct such a campaign when his candidates have a record good enough to stand on. The best government rests on persons, not property, on the free development of public opinion, and not on authority. Today, we see ahead a new vista for Kansas City. A giant community is being born stretching far beyond the city's borders and bringing under its protection literally thousands of new families. Change is the order of the day for city and county governments, and our attitude must gear itself for swift and decisive change. Our organization has kept faith with change. No bond issue, city or county, has failed to receive its support. The record is clear on our all-out campaign on behalf of such civic pillars as the public schools and the teachers. We are not opposed to change on either the city or county level when change is warranted. And what is this area's critical need? A broad collective effort to meet the growing crisis in local and county government. We see it also as our duty to promote the public welfare of Kansas City and Jackson County, to attract commerce, promote industry, and foster morality and religion. The orderly business of this community will go forward only if the people speak freely what is in their hearts. Only then will good government prevail and greedy men be thrust aside. Thank you.